I have the great fortune of being the director of the McPherson Eye Research Institute, which is a community of over 100 different members, all vision researchers, who are pioneering the science, art, and medicine of saving sight. And that gives us a tremendously powerful team at the University of Wisconsin uh, to combine expertise and resources to address big challenges. The most recent research that we're doing builds upon really the power of the University of Wisconsin and, and what it's done in the field of stem cell research. Uh, Jamie Thompson's work with uh, embryonic stem cells and more recently induced pluripotent stem cells, which are a type of uh, stem cell that can theoretically produce all the different cell types in the body, including the cells that are in the retina, uh, but do so from a starting material of skin or blood or something that can be uh, easily do donated by an, an individual. So what we did was we teamed with uh, Jamie Thompson and other researchers here on campus uh, to obtain uh, skin samples or blood samples from individuals and then reverse engineer those into a stem cell state and then using techniques that we developed in our laboratory forward engineer them back into uh, retina-like structures. Um, and what was remarkable about that to us was the fact that not only could you make all the different very specific and um, uh, fragile and unique cell types that are found in the retina, but that they would also form connections, limited connections, uh, that they would layer themselves out much the same way that you would see naturally forming in a human retina, and they would uh, show function in a dish. Now, that's a long way away from putting that back into a patient and restoring vision, but there's evidence from other laboratories around the world that that may very well be possible. Um, so that gives us a lot, of, a lot of hope in the future for possible transplantation strategies. However, another thing that you can do with this technology that's probably going to benefit patients in the near term is because we can take these uh, cells from any individual with any eye disease, we can study them in a dish. And as it turns out, a lot of these inherited ge these genetic diseases called retinitis pigmentosa, we know the genes that cause them, but we really don't know what the defects in those genes lead to in terms of dysfunction of the individual cell types. Why do those gene mutations cause the cells to ultimately die off? And if we can understand that process, we can then perhaps develop drugs, um, target nutritional therapies, et cetera, that could help individuals that have these diseases to prevent loss of vision as opposed to try to replace cells once they're already uh, dead. So we can take these cells from individuals and instead of having to reach into their eye and take their retina, which would not be a good thing, mm -hmm. so these are cell types that we can't just biopsy like skin or like liver and still say, okay, you're gonna be okay with it. So we can't do that. So instead now we can use stem cell technology to essentially get a biopsy of that particular patient's um, retinal cells and expand them and make as much as we need to run complex tests um, and understand what the uh, cell processes are that go awry in those genetic diseases and then use that information to intelligently design uh, screens for drugs or say, okay, well, maybe this particular nutritional change will be a benefit to these patients. And that streamlines the process um, and actually makes it customizable.